Okay, so first uh, <clears throat> we are going to pay homage to the Buddha by reciting Namo Tassa three times. So you can join me with the joint palms. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Blessed One, the Worthy One, the Fully Enlightened Buddha. So that's the meaning. And <clears throat> as we uh, practice the meditation technique taught by the Buddha, it is always uh, good to pay homage to him. Um, it is a way of planting the seed of enlightenment and awakening in our heart and mind. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, two weeks ago, uh, one of our friends and students uh, asked me a question, how do you do this breathing exercise. How do you breathe in, breathe out? Uh, applying the uh, right effort. Eh? So, um, last week I did talk about a way of how to do this breathing exercise uh, with this right effort based on a discourse of the Buddha. So today I'm going to ex uh, deal with the same question uh, with another uh, form of uh, teaching that uh, we find in the sutras. So I'm not going to ask you <laughs> what I said last week. <laughs> Sometimes I give the pop quiz, but I'm going to skip it today. <laughs> but I'm going to directly go to this teaching. <laughs> um, you see, the Buddha uh, made it very clear that the way to enlightenment, the way to awakening of Buddhahood uh, is the Noble Eightfold Path. In Pali we call the Arya Atangika Magga, the Noble Eightfold Path. Uh, is the way to enlightenment. So, uh, if you are here to experience enlightenment, and this is the path that you have to follow. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but there are eight factors, and these 
eight factors have been summarized into three steps, three teachings, basically. Uh, we say uh, in Pali we call uh, Tividha Sikha, threefold training. And first is the sila, the morality. Uh, second is the samadhi, the meditation. Or samadhi has been translated into English as concentration. But samadhi is meditation, which is the uh, way to going deep into the uh, mind to experience the calm state of our, our mind or the state of tranquility. And the third is the panya, which is the wisdom to see the things as they really are. But I'm not going to explain all these three uh, fall practices, the trainings, Sila Samadhi Panya, but I'm going to talk about the Samadhi, the concentration or the meditation, uh, which starts with the uh, right effort. And let's say there are eight, of, eight uh, factors Right, we call samaditi, right view, right understanding, right, right perspective. Uh, samma sankapa, right intention, right thought. Samma vacha, right action. Samma, kam, uh, samma vacha, right speech. Samma kamanta, right action. Uh, samma ajiva, uh, right livelihood. Samma sati, right effort. Uh, Samma vayama, right effort. Samma sati, right mindfulness. Samma samadhi, right concentration. So these are the eight uh, factors that we have to uh, cultivate in order to experience uh, the state of enlightenment or awakening. If you really want to be free or want to experience the freedom and liberation from all sufferings and pains, as Buddha uh, made it clear, these are the eight factors that we have to cultivate as an individual. So now, uh, all these three, uh, all these eight factors have been summarized into those uh, three practices, and the first two, uh, right uh, view and right uh, thought or intention, belongs to the Panya group, the wisdom group. And then the right speech, right action, right livelihood, belongs to the morality, the sila group, the practice of morality. And the right effort, right uh, mindfulness and right concentration, these three are considered uh, samadhi. So, the meditation group, samadhi group. So now when we talk about uh, samadhi or, or meditation, meditation practice begins with the right effort. Yeah? So, uh, now, uh, when we talk about bhavana or meditation, in fact, we all are practicing meditation to purify our mind and heart. Uh, so now, you may have a question, uh, why... Uh, we have to purify the mind. What's wrong with that? And how, what uh, makes our mind impure? So these are some questions that you might have. So now, 
uh, first of all, you have to understand the fact that uh, if something is really disturbing you or, or, or if something is really bugging you, that means something is wrong with the mind. <laughs> right? Now what is it? That's what you have to understand. Um, we know sometimes uh, these are the uh, negative emotions um, causing the disturbance, the emotional disturbances in our life. So uh, there are unwholesome thoughts uh, which are not pure. And these impure thoughts may be making the mind impure. Or may unwholesome thoughts are making the mind unwholesome. Uh, so we make an effort, we uh, cultivate Samma Vayama in order to purify our mind and heart. So now when we talk about the Vayama, Vayama is the exercise. You know, maybe, you know how, uh, <laughs> when we do the right uh, effort, the right exercise, and that also means the uh, wrong exercise. There's a wrong way to do exercise. <laughs> now, when you go to fitness club to do <laughs> the workout, right? And you have the personal trainers, and they teach you how to do it you know, in the proper way, correctly, right? And if you do it uh, incorrectly, uh, you might get, uh, you might end up with a lot of physical hurts, and it's not going to work out. <laughs> so make sure that even when you do the physical exercise, you do it the right way. <laughs> so here we are doing not just the it is, it is the, of course, there are physical exercise, but this is the mental exercise that we are doing. So there's a way to do it. Now, you come here to practice meditation. So there's a way to practice meditation. It's not just coming here, sitting on the cushion and closing the eyes and focusing on the breath. <laughs> this could be... Uh, uh, informal way of doing the meditation practice. And first thing that you have to understand, I am practicing meditation to free myself, my mind. Now, what am I freeing myself from? I'm practicing this meditation to free myself from all sufferings and pains, all negative emotions. And, and you know that right at the beginning, I say that in this guided meditation. You need to have this good intention. Based on this good intention, then you do this uh, meditation. So, with this, and then you need to have the mental energy. You can't just remain indifferent, right? Just by focusing on the breath. Um, when you, all, although you focus on the breath, but your mind is somewhere else. Your mind is thinking of so many things. Maybe uh, things that you really like. Maybe about a disturbing incident, you know. Maybe a person that you can't get along with. Uh, maybe, you know, 
uh, about your office, maybe about your boss or manager, maybe about your partner, your work. When, when you uh, allow your mind to go into all this, um, you no, know, sometimes, although you're here uh, practicing meditation, uh, focusing on the breath, um, you are practicing meditation with an unwholesome uh, mind, a lot of unwholesome thoughts. Now, that this is why uh, sometimes people complain, you know, I go to meditation class, I have been trying it, but it's not working out, it's taking time. But you have to do it the proper way. You have to do it properly. So now, as you remain in this cushion uh, with the sitting posture, you have to put your whole heart into this practice. Like the, for this, the, as you do this mental exercise, uh, following the right uh, with this right effort, um, then you have to put your whole heart into it, like genuinely, like being right here in this moment. Uh, make sure that as you put your whole heart into this uh, breathing exercise, make sure that no unwholesome thought is arising in the mind. So now, how do we do this Sama Vayama practice, right effort? How do we breathe in, breathe out with the right effort? There are four steps. In, in this uh, making right effort. There are four steps. First step is we call uh, Sangvara. Sangvara means prevention. Okay? Prevention. Second step, Pahana. Pahana means elimination, uprooting. Third step, bhavana. Bhavana means cultivation or meditation, cultivation. Fourth step, anurakkhana, uh, preservation or sustaining. Sangvara, Pahana, Bhavana, Anurakkhana. Prevention, uprooting, or elimination, cultivation, and preservation. Now, what are these words? How do we do this? When we talk about the prevention, you prevent yourself from unwholesome thoughts which are not present yet. Or you prevent your mind going into uh, or visiting some people or incidents or stories. Right? I know you're, you're working every day, you're having, you have a struggle, you're dealing with difficult people, right? In every company, in every office environment, everybody is dealing with a lot of struggles, even including the boss. <laughs> right? All employees and employers, everybody is struggling. Right? 
So now you're here for peace of mind. Now, if you just allow yourself to visit those people, or if you allow your mind to be in that environment, then of course your mind is going to be tainted, defiled, impure. Why? Every time you think about that environment, every time you think about that person, it's going to cause you a lot of problems. You're going to get angry. That person is gone. <laughs> you're here, but you're thinking about that person. Right? So, you prevent. You prevent from unwholesome thoughts which are not present there. Or you prevent from going into those places, thinking about those things. So now, this is why I say, withdraw your attention from the external world, external things. And also, Next I say, withdraw your attention from the old memories. All this time, you have been dealing with the difficult people. You had a lot of negativities. You have already gotten angry. You, you already have a lot of uh, jealousies, or cravings, desires or conceit, pride, but not all the negative emotions. You know who you are. Right? So then, there are unwholesome thoughts present in the mind. So now, you uproot, you eliminate those unwholesome thoughts. Now, withdrawing your attention from the out, things outside there is not going to do the complete work. Then you have to withdraw your attention from the old memories, meaning the mental image. Eliminate that mental image. If you're dealing with a difficult person, if you're carrying that person's image in your mind, every time you think about that person, touch that person, you're going to be upset. You're going to be so agitated. You're going to be hating that person. You could be breathing here, in and out. Breathing in, breathing out. If, if, you, if you do that, think about that person <laughs> with that memory, you're not going to have a good meditation. So, you have to let go. Let go all the unwholesome thoughts, all the unwholesome images, the images disturbing, which are disturbing you. Right? See, this is very important that you remember. So, when you breathe in, breathe out, make sure that no, your, 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 your attention is not outside there. Make sure that the mental image is not there. You're just fully focusing as a free person, free man, free person. I'm just breathing in this moment. So, as you prevent from the unwholesome thoughts and negative emotions, and if you, as you re remove, uproot the negative emotions from your heart and mind, but then, next is, to cultivate, which this is the uh, most important factor. Now you're cultivating 
the positive seeds. You have let go the negative seeds of negative thoughts. Right? Now, you're planting the uh, wholesome thoughts, the seeds of the wholesome thoughts. You make an effort. So now, if you think you're angry with that person or something, instead of getting angry with that person, as you breathe in, breathe out, see whether you can forgive and let go. Forget and forgive. <laughs> it is the effort you have to make. It's going to change your whole life. <laughs> it's going to change your whole life. This is all about you. That's what you have to understand. This is not about him or her. Remember, there, oh, there's a book. If I am okay, you're okay. <laughs> you're okay, I am okay. If I'm okay, you're okay. Right? So, you plant the seed of forgiveness, or love and compassion, or instead of hating this person, I'm going to love him. <laughs> Can you do that? It's going, it's going to be a big challenge. But if you make the effort, you see your life. Even you begin to experience the physiological change taking place right away. Right? And then Anurakana, preservation, sustaining, then you have to sustain this effort, always to put your attention to the positive side of the person, or the wholesome thoughts. See, you prevent from seeing the negative side of the life, and you uproot the negative side of the life and then you make an effort to cultivate, to see the positive side of the life and then you maintain it, you sustain it. This is very important. If you always see the negative side of the story, negative side of your life, negative side of the other person, you're going to get stuck. You're going to be miserable. <laughs> you're going to be so miserable. You don't need a Buddha or God or Messiah or Messenger to say this. You just feel it immediately. And then, when you see the physiological change, in a transformation by making this effort, then you know, maintain it. It is like when you do the gardening, what do you do first? You clean, you clean the garden, you put all the accumulated garbage away, you put them out. Right? Of course, if let's say, uh, I'm pretty sure some of you have the uh, backyard swimming pool, right? Don't you? You do. Now, what do you do during the winter time when the uh, fall season comes? You cover it, right? You cover it. Why are you covering it? You don't want any dirt, any garbage falling into the swimming pool. You don't want any animals coming and <laughs> taking a shower in your swimming pool. <laughs> right? So in order to avoid this, what do you do? 
you cover it. Right? Now, before covering, imagine there are already some dirt, some garbage. Now, what do you do? You remove them. Then, you have to maintain. You have to uh, make sure that you have only the pure water. So that you could have uh, pure water, not the filthy water. Not, not the dirty water. Tainted water. And then make sure that you preserve it all the time. Make sure to clean it all the time. And then, it is like in the, in the garden, you uh, put all the garbage away and you remove, if there are weeds, right, unnecessary plants, you remove them, uproot them, and then you, uh, if the soil is not uh, rich, to make it rich, you add fertilizers, right, rich soil, and then what do you do? You plant the seed. You plant whatever flowers uh, you love. Right? And then, after planting, make sure that no weeds arising again, <laughs> coming again. If they come, remove them right away and make sure that you water it every day and make sure that you water all these plants with a, a big heart with a happy mind that one day these plants are going to grow up. They're going to become big. As they grow, they are going to give us beautiful flowers. So that, you know, these beautiful flowers make me happy. Not only me, whoever is passing by, whoever is visiting this garden, everybody is going to be so happy. I'm pretty sure you have gotten some feedbacks from your family members, visitors, if you have a garden. Wow, they admire, they really appreciate. So, your heart, mind should be made a beautiful garden. Remove, prevent from all the unnecessary garbage. Uh, unwholesome thoughts. If there are, remove them. Put them away. And then cultivate the good thoughts. Always think about the happy thoughts. And then preserve them. Maintain them. So when you do this in going out breathing exercise, the mindful breathing, you have to apply these four steps. It's like, you know, every time you breathe in, see whether you're preventing from unwholesome thoughts. See whether you're, you have uprooted the unwholesome thought. See whether you have culti- there's a good thought in, with the ingoing breath. See whether you're sustaining it. Right? And the same thing with the outgoing breath. Whatever the breath pattern happens, it could be short, it could be long, whatever the breath pattern is, just do that with the whole, putting your whole heart into it, and with the knowledge and wisdom of this right effort in four steps. And then you're going to have a good meditation. But I can, uh, I think I'm getting more understanding about this right effort. Maybe next week <laughs> I will expand this on in a different way. 
So uh, as you do this breathing exercise, follow these instructions. Remember these instructions. Remember the meaning of sati. I explained this so many times. It's not just awareness. Sati means memory, means to remember. Remember what? The instructions. Follow the instructions. When you do the physical exercise in the uh, fitness club, you always follow the instructions of the personal trainer. Right? So that you have a good exercise. See, so in the same way, you follow, remember all these instructions, follow the instructions, and be gentle to yourself and be fully present in the moment and just tell yourself, I am here to relax. This is my moment. This is my hour. I'm not going to think about anything. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to feel anything. I'm not going to work. I am just here to relax. Remember, meditation is not about thinking, feeling, working, or doing. Meditation is all about relaxing the body, calming the mind. You can relax the body, calm the mind with this ingoing out of breath, the breathing exercise, following with the right effort, right? Following to practicing uh, or, or the breathing exercise with the right effort in these four steps. Then you're going to have a good meditation. <laughs> okay, so with this in mind, now let us begin our meditation practice. <clears throat>